Jesus name we pray. Amen. Precious Father, we are grateful unto thee for who you are. We thank you for your love, your care, your power, your mind, your grace, your enablement. Thank you for this weekend. Thank you because it is a weekend of supernatural visitation. It is a weekend of blessing. Since Friday, you've been blessing us. You've been using different people to reach out to us in different ways. So that, Lord, we can be the best that you have ordained for us to be. At this moment, speak to us again. Amen. And every chuckles and fetters of the enemy in our life, break them off in Jesus' name. Amen. Set us loose Amen. to do exploit for you. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, by the grace of God, we have been here since uh, Friday, listening to the word of God from different people and with different grace. This month, we are looking into revival through exploits. And on Friday, we were ministered to by one of our ministers on personal revival of a thirsty soul. Personal revival. When you have a personal revival, I have a personal revival, and everybody, individual revival, coming together brings about the flame of revival. And then yesterday we were spoken to on the corporate revival of a godly church. It's not enough to be called a church, but a godly church. And in all the messages we have seen, what is revival? And what revival is not? At this point in time, by the grace of God, we are going to be considering the exploits of revived people. When indeed you have been visited of the Lord. When indeed you have been revived. When indeed you have been awakened. Then what do you do? That is what we are considering at this moment. And I believe you will be blessed. Amen. Of course, no doubt, we introduced something that is unusual. We allowed our Father and the Lord to still speak to us on breaking jokes and curses that may be there in our lives. And we are still going to do more of that before we go. Because somebody here will leave this place liberated. Somebody here is living here delivered. Yeah. Somebody here is living this place set free in Jesus' name. Yeah. The exploits of revived people. Exploits of the revived people. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flattery. But the people that do know their God shall be strong. And do exploit. In the name of the Lord, you will do exploit. Amen. In your own generation, you will do exploit. Amen. To be revived is to be resuscitated from dying or from fainting. To be revived is to be awakened from stupor or sluggishness. It is to be re energized, to be recharged, to be invigorated, revitalized, or rejuvenated. To be revived is to become active and involving. It is to be seen effective and efficient, competent and resourceful. You will be resourceful in Jesus' name. Amen. To be revived is to be filled with the spirit dynamo of the mighty God. The spirit dynamo, the motor, the engine, the turbine, the electric generator of God in you. When you are revived, the world will know that something on the inside of you is bubbling. The world is about to see the manifestation of the glory of God in your life in Jesus' name. Because uh, 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 when there is no revival, there is dullness, there is quietness. Uh, uh, but when revival comes, uh, there is fire. Amen. I said there will be fire. Amen. And the Lord will revive you in Jesus' name. And then we look at the word exploit. 
Exploit stands for achievement. It stands for activities. It stands for deeds. It stands for what you are able to do, what you are doing, what you have done, that the world can see. I pray the world will see your glory. In the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Fire is not fire if it cannot burn. Did you hear that? When they say there is fire and then you touch it, there is no heat, there is no burning, there is nothing, then it is not fire. Somebody here will catch fire. In the name of Jesus. A dead man cannot move. A dead man cannot walk. A dead man cannot talk. A dead man cannot do anything. He's inactive. He's insensitive. He has no feeling of pause. He's motionless. He's cold. He's pale. He's unattractive. He's unengaging. He's useless. He's uh, fruitless. He's, he's tense. A dead person stinks and is scary. You know, no matter how close somebody may be to you, once you see a dead person, you feel somehow. And somebody will pray right away, let the spirit of the dead not fall upon me. And I pray, whether spiritual or physical, the spirit of the dead will not come upon you in Jesus' name. But when a man is truly revived, he becomes charismatic. He becomes motivated, motivated, impacting and engaging. When we talk about exploit again, we are talking about the deeds and the activities of somebody. To, and then the person becomes charismatic. He becomes visionary. He becomes skilled. He becomes compelling. He becomes appealing and captivating. He becomes magnetizing or attractive. I pray your life will begin to attract people. In the name of Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 29. The Bible talks about Christ Jesus. Who was not just revived but charismatic in him. Who was not just alive but active and effective. The Bible said he taught them as one having authority and not as the Christ. That they mean. When you are revived you become a man of authority. You become a woman of power. And the Lord is bringing that into you in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 1 verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Listen to this. Your life will begin to astonish people. Your deeds and ministry will begin to astonish people. Your exploits will begin to astonish people around you in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will preserve you in Jesus' name. Every believer who knows the manifestation of divine presence and power in their lives will do exploit for the Lord. To do exploit is to do extraordinary work through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you know that we are in the last days. And the Antichrist is here already. And the Antichrist will communicate, will walk with vigor, with energy, with power in such a convincing way. But those that are revived already, those that are filled with the Spirit of the Lord, those that are filled with the power of the Lord, they will counter and negate all the works of darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 22, that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. But what will the Lord say unto them? Depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. That makes a difference between the revived person in Christ and those that are alive in the world, in, the, in, in, in Satan. Those that are servants of the Lord and servants of the devil, you'll be a servant of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verses 49 and 50. Luke chapter 9, verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Look up here. 
Look up here. Look up here. We saw one casting out devils in thy name. In thy name. And we forbade him. And we forbade him. Nothing will hinder you. Amen. You will cast out devil. Amen. Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By the power of the Lord. I will do what heaven has ordained for me to do. I will cast out devil. I will heal the sick. I will set the captive free. In the name of Jesus, through me, souls shall be saved. Through me, the kingdom of heaven will be populated. And through me, the kingdom of darkness shall be emptied. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And John answered and said, Master, with someone casting out devils in thy name. And we forbid him, because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not. And the Lord is telling anybody, whoever in your life, Forbid him not. For he that is not against us is for us. If they are not against us in holiness and purity, if they are not against us in righteousness and uprightness, then the power of God is real in their life. Amen. 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 And then the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, for the manifestation, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. Every man. Pay attention here. Well, the man there represents humanity. Whether you are a little child or you are an old person, whether you are young or you are aged, whether you are a man or you are a woman, the Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. For the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Another the word of knowledge, another the uh, faith, another gift of healing, another working of miracles, another diverse uh, descending, descending of spirit, another prophecy, another diverse kinds of tongues, another interpretation of tongues. Listen to this. If you are truly revived, all these gifts are available for you. I said they are available for you. I said they are available for you. In the name of Jesus. Please pay attention here. The exploits of revived people. When you truly give your life to Christ Jesus, you will not be living a defeated life anymore. But rather a victorious life. But rather a successful life. And it doesn't matter whether you are a baby in Christ or you are old in the Lord. You know, a few months ago, I think it was in January or in Thailand, I think we're there together. And then I met with a great, great preacher from America. If I mention him, all of you here will know him. And then we sat down together, and then we spoke. And I took one of the pastors with me while I was going to have a meeting with him. And he said, well, my job is just to preach the gospel. I don't do miracle. You will do miracle. Amen. I said you will do miracle. Open your Bible very quickly to the book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 and let us look at it because whatsoever God said you are going to do, you will do. Nothing will hinder you. I said nothing will hinder you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are there in Mark, did I say Mark or Matthew? Mark chapter 16. Look at it there from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the first assignment. That is the first exploit of a truly revived person. And then the Bible now says, as you do your part, heaven will do his part. And as many of them that believe, something will happen in their life. Something will happen through their life. And if you are here today and you are truly believing the Lord, and that thing is not happening, I declare before you leave here today, the power of God is coming upon you in Jesus' name. 
Look at the next verse. He that believeth, he that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved. Shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils and in the name. Of they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall lift up your right and say the name of Jesus. From today, I agree with God and declare myself a miracle worker. A miracle worker. A miracle worker. In the name of Jesus. You must have heard me before. I was just about two years old in the law. When I was confronted with a, a, a serious situation and somebody gave up the ghost and I was there and the pastor was not there. I was there. My leaders were not there. I was there. The Holy Ghost was there. I said the Holy Ghost was there. And I called upon the name of the Lord and the dead came back to life. In your life, miracle will happen. Do the my sense I want that to happen in Jesus' name. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Exploits of the revived people. 
I'll tell you the revival point in a minute. Signs will follow you. Amen. That's why it says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Every man. Every believer, every sense of God, every child of God, everyone redeemed by the Lord to profit with all. You have the word of knowledge. You have faith in you. You have the gift of healing. You have the gift of prophecy. You have the son in the spirit. You know, I just came from Nigeria a few days ago. And then somebody came to me. I called on me and said, please, I need you to get to me before you go. Because a few years back, you came to Nigeria. We had a situation with this particular child that has been ongoing for years. You came, you prayed, and that was the end of that problem. Amen. We need you again. People will seek for you. Amen. I said people will seek for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I got there and I took authority. When there are situations, you will get there, you will take authority. Amen. I said you will take authority. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, sometimes ago, somebody was pregnant uh, and way, way, way overdue. And you know, over there, they are scared of uh, C-section because of many casualties as a result of that. And so, what do we do? The child is not coming. And uh, you know, they say, they tie the child. Who is going to tie your line? Nobody will tie you down. And then the sister came. Her name is Faith. I said, what is your name? Her name is Faith. I said, have faith in God. Amen. Amen. And then I prayed. That very week the child came. Exploits of the revived people. You know, I'm sharing this testimony so that you can believe in yourself as you believe in the Lord that you don't have to wait for me or wait for your pastor or anybody that God has given unto you the manifestation of the spirit to do exploit for the glory of the name of the Lord and in the better one Amen. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 behold I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, one time we were praying for somebody that was being troubled by demons and evil spirits. And while we were trying to pray for the person, I called this particular local leader to join us. And the person was scared and afraid. Uh, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm a believer, but my faith is not up to this level. Listen to this. You are not to run away from demons. Amen. Who should run from who? I said, who should run from who? Pay attention here. Whenever you hear there are activities and operations of witches and wizards, who should run from who? The witches and wizards should run from you. I pity you. You said you're a believer. And you, hear, you heard about witches and wizards. And you are fretting. And you are fidgeting. And you are sweating. Take authority. Amen. I said take authority. Amen. Because the Bible said that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall Somebody said, Pastor, there are witches in the church. I said they are in the right place. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I said they are in the right place. If the witches cannot come to the church, where will they be delivered? Where will the power of God be demonstrated? Let them come. What did I just say? And see the power of the Lord. Amen. I said they will see the power of the Lord. They, there was a woman called Mary Magdalene. The very day she met with Jesus, the Bible said she had how many spirits? Seven. What happened to the seven of them? Eliminated. If you are here in which today, I declare to you, that spirit is leaving you. Amen. Somebody just means that. I said if you are here, a witch or a wizard, there is enough power in this place to neutralize 
the root and the power and the faith of the Spirit controlling you in Jesus' name. Because he said, Behold, I give unto you power. Between the power God has given me and the power of darkness, which one is more important? Which one is more powerful? If God be for us, who can be against us? I said, who can be against us? Listen to this. The church is a spiritual hospital. Let the demonized people come. Let the witches and the wizards come. But if you are not born again, I warn you. Because they will roast you. You hear what I'm talking about? And that is why we are talking about revived people. We don't want you to come to church and remain the way you are. And remain the way you came. No. We want you to come and become a teacher. We want you to come and become victorious. And become successful. We want you to come and become a terror to the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Because listen to this. Whether the witches and the wizards come to church or not, you will meet them in the market. You will meet them in the store. The apartment where you are living, they will be there for you. So, it's a waste of your time saying you are running away from them. They don't want to follow you physically. They follow you spiritually. Don't you remember the last time you had a dream? Did, did you see them physically? How did they get inside your room when you were sleeping? How did they know your apartment number? How were they able to identify your own bed? They don't need your information. They operate in the spirit realm. Stop running. You cannot escape. Are you listening to me? Run to the master, Jesus. Obtain the power from the Lord and deal with the enemy. And neutralize their power. And declare to the world, Christ Jesus has the power. The power of God, he will. Christ Jesus has the power. And let them see the power in you. Let them see it in you. Let them see it in you. And they will see it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, the expression of people that are not revived. When I use the word expression, I'm talking about the description. I'm talking about the portraits, the picture of people that are not revived. That means, don't just come to church. I told you somebody died. I was just two years old in the Lord. But I know whom I have believed. Instead of forgetting and running and screaming and shouting, and mind you, it was in the night. Over there in that place, there was no 911 to call. But there was a spiritual 911. And I pick up the phone. What is that phone? Tell somebody to me. Prayer. Prayer is the phone. Amen. And then I call upon that name, tell me the name. And the answer came. And the miracle came. Amen. And it's coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen. When people are not revived, what do you see in their life very quickly? They are ignorant and they lack knowledge. Hosea 4 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are religious, but they are not righteous. When you are merely religious and not righteous, you can't have this power we are talking about. You are not revived. You are still dead in sin. But what we are saying is, you should become dead to sin. There are two different things. When you are dead in sin, you are a sinner. When you are dead to sin, sin has no effect or impact in your life again. You are free and free indeed. They are religious but not righteous. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 that they have the form of godliness but they deny the power therein. When you are still telling lies, you have the form of godliness. You deny the power therein. When you are still watching pornography, you have the form of godliness. You deny the power therein. When you are still deceiving people, when you are still rebellious, all these are there. Number three, they are disobedient, rebellious, stubborn, and self will They are not revived. And it doesn't matter whether they are children, whether they are workers in the church, whether they are leaders in the church, whether they are wives or husbands, they have the spirit operating in their life. 
the Lord will set you free. Amen. They are selfish and self-centered. If you see any of all this in you, you need revival. I need a better one. Amen. People that are not yet revived, they are proud. What did I say? They are proud, they are arrogant, and they are incorrigible. You can correct them. They are talkative and full of multitudes of words. When well, you see people that talk so much, he or she needs revival. Ask your neighbor, do you talk too much? I say, ask your neighbor, do you talk too much? Amen. Then you need revival. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, that in the multitude of wars, there wanted not sin. But he that refrained his lips is wise. Be a wise man. Amen. Number seven, people that are not revived are people that imagine evil things. Evil things. Evil things. They think evil. But hear the word of the Lord in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, verses 4 and 5. He said, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every stronghold will be put down today. Amen. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself exalted the knowledge of God. And then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Number eight, people that are not revived are suspicious. Pay attention here. They suspect this one, they suspect that one, they suspect that one, they suspect that one. Invariably, they are living in fear. They can't trust anybody. They can't depend on anybody. They can't rely on anybody because the spirit of fear has enveloped them. They are fearful. They live in fear on a daily basis. They are, fear, they, are, they are afraid of rats. They are afraid of ants. They are afraid of anything and everything that moves strangely. Everything is demon around them. I like the song we used to sing. I don't know if you believe it when you sing it. The song says, I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Amen. When I look at my right, when I look at my left, I see Satan as When I look at my back, when I look to my front, I see Satan. Give it to me. I have seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen the downfall of Satan. Glory be to God. Why are you afraid? When Jesus said, Fear not. When God said, Fear not. I am thy God. I will help you. Why are you afraid? And then, oh, maybe you need to come over here to this office here, to, to the church here. Sometimes I'm down there in my office and you see some things, and you're, you know you're alone in the building, and you see some things, don't crack, 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 crack. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Ah, if you are not careful, you won't stay here. Praise the Lord. I tell I did. I am here. Praise the Lord. But there is nothing. It's all just all these animals that are crawling up and down. It's not them. It's not doing anything. Amen. And there was a day. Someone say a day. I was in my office. You know, I walked in late sometimes. And then it was around 12 midnight. And one of our uh, leaders here came to do some things. And the church will help us take care of some things. And I didn't know he was coming. 
around 12 midnight, were you to be expecting anybody in the office? Amen. And then I was in my office and I began to hear real life movement now. Amen. And something said today is today. <laughs> this is the middle of the night now. Praise the Lord. Today is today. Even if they are picking up the phone before 911, before 911 come, praise God. But you know what I did? Amen. Tell somebody to be courageous. I said, tell somebody to be courageous. Amen. I said to myself, I'm not going to sit down here until this day come to meet me here. Amen. So I buckled up and then I got up. And then I tiptoed to the door. Amen. And then I opened my door. Boom. I said, hey, who are you? Who is there? Hey, turn your face now. I was like, oh, pastor, it is me. <laughs> Somebody say, amen. I'm not going to keep quiet on the country. Amen. Didn't God tell Joshua be strong and courageous? Amen. Even in the middle of the night, I tell him. I was ready to confront whatsoever the thing may be. No matter what you're having, I have somebody on the inside of me. I said I have somebody on the inside of me. I've got something on the inside. He's walking on my outside. Oh, oh, oh you don't know it. Oh, oh, change in my life. I've got something on my inside. He's walking on my outside. Oh, oh, change in my life. Oh. I've got that Holy Ghost on the inside. He's walking on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. I've got that Holy Ghost on the inside. He's walking on my outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh. Was it not in January I told you that I used to have problem with fear? And I used to be afraid of darkness. But when the Holy Ghost came, Hallelujah. when the Holy Ghost came, that spirit was gone. Amen. Amen. Just want to be courageous. Amen. Amen. And so if you are not born again, if you are not free from sin, the enemy will be. Give me the word. The enemy will be tossing you up and down. Will be pushing you here and there. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Fear. I'll tell you this. You know, I told you I just came from Nigeria. The day I was going on the 20th of March. And then we were in the plane. And then a lady was sitting next to me. And then in the middle of the flight, I felt led to talk with her. And then I began the discussion from the known to the unknown. And I began to tell her some of the things I tell you here. And I told her about the need to live your life for God, to be holy, pure, and righteous. And when you are not holy, when you are not pure and righteous, all the kinds of things that will be pursuing you, and then you go to this prophet and that prophet, and I said quite a lot of things, quite a lot of things. And eventually, I said, you don't need any pastor to pray for you. I didn't tell her I'm a pastor. I said, I don't, you don't need any prophets for anything. And I spoke at length. 
And then, as I speak, I go to the scripture. As I speak, I go to the scripture. As I speak, I go to the scripture. And I wasn't reading any of them. Once I quote the scripture, I said, you read it yourself. Eventually, she looked at me and said, you are a God sent. She said, I am going to Nigeria to meet a prophet in Nigeria. And then she told me all the troubles in her life. She said, now I know better. I said, it's not me, it's the word of God. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. I said, when you get to Nigeria, keep your money. She said, I've been there before. And she told me, the other time I went, I even gave them this amount of money because they wanted me to come. I said, I have to go back. And they said, okay, pay money, hundreds of the currency. For them to, to pray for her. And as soon as she came back to the States, she ran to trouble, she ended up in jail. Amen. And she said she lives in Virginia. Amen. Now, to cut a long story short, I said, when you get to Nigeria, go and enjoy yourself. I said, the people you consider your enemy, go and be friends with them. I need a better one. The Bible says when the word of a man pleases the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace. You are the one making enemies for yourself. The people you are calling witches and wizards, they are not witches and wizards anyway. If there is any witch or wizard, when they come near you, they will come near fire. Amen? Amen. It is when you are called yourself that you are afraid. I said, enjoy yourself in Nigeria. Go make peace with everybody. Forget about any enemy. And then spend time with the Lord. Take authority. And then I led her to Christ Jesus. Amen. When you don't have Christ, the devil will pursue you. Are you listening to me? Yes. People like that are those that believe in dreams. They believe in vision. Dream, vision, dream, vision, dream, vision, dream, vision. At the expense of the word of God. You need revival. You need revival. Listen to this. Just in case I forget later on. When I newly came to this church. Years back. You know one of the things that destroyed the church? Because there were people in this church. That were dreamers. They would dream. This one is a witch. That one is a witch. And they destroyed the church and I came and I said that is the spirit of the devil how can a witch and a wizard come to the church I said maybe the people that were catching witches and wizards and the witches and the wizards themselves and unfortunately the leader of the church there was carried away and swearing away with all those lies of the enemy a pastor this one don't go near that one don't touch her and I said I have you, sir. Amen? Amen. He didn't know where I was coming from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the people that they call witches, are you able to sing some song? Amen. The one that is a wizard, and uh, before you know it, you realize there is no witch, there is no wizard. When they were catching witches and wizards, the church cannot move forward. Are you listening to me? When they were catching wizards and wizards, they couldn't eat from one another. When they were catching wizards and wizards, they couldn't visit one another. Everybody was being suspected. Up till now, they believed the pastors who at that time was also a witch. They were catching wizards and so who were catching them as witches. <laughs> Amen? Release yourself. I need a better one. Amen. Release yourself. All you need to do is line up with God. Line up with God. And then we prayed. And the Lord had us. And the church moved forward. Amen. I said the church moved forward. Amen. Listen to this. I don't run the church of God by dreams and revelation of man. Are you listening to me? If you have dreams, give it to yourself. Hello? You know, because this one will have a dream, I have a dream. That one has a dream, I have. How many dreams are we going to go, go by? 
How many dreams are we going to walk with? There is one thing we all can walk with, the word of God. Amen. I need a better one. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a jot or tittle will pass without being fulfilled. I don't know if you read it, there is someone that a uh, few years back that said, uh, I died, I went to heaven, I did this and that. Now the person is doing restitution that I never died. <laughs> and these are the people you want us to listen to. If you, uh, your life is not right with God, and you're saying God is speaking to you. Which God is speaking to you? You need deliverance. Tell your neighbor you need deliverance. Oh, I know you are, you'll be as afraid to say that. <laughs> Praise God. I know some of you will be saying it in your mind. I can't point to you, but you, only you need deliverance. Amen. Dreams are revelation. You need revival. The apostles that were following, what would they do with all these dreamers? They weren't leading the church by dreams and revelations. Other than the revelation from the word of God. And please pay attention here. If God is going to speak, if indeed he has a servant in charge, he will speak to his servant. Amen. Am I communicating here? Yes, he will speak to his servant. And listen to this. If there are witches and wizards in every battle of life, the captain of the battle is the first target. That will tell you, I'm not taking it lightly. Amen? Amen. All we all have to do, whether you are the leader or you are the lay, be right with God. Your colleague at work can bring you down. Have you not heard of students in school? You know there are some people, and I pity them, when they come to church, they don't want this woman to touch their child. They don't want that person to judge their child. Shame on you. You know who is touching your children at school. Hello, somebody. They take care you take your children to. Who is taking care of them? Agents? Saints? Excuse me. Why are you such an agent of darkness that the only place you see devil and demon is the house of God? You don't see them out there. Amen. Amen. I, am I am free. I said I am free. I am free. Let those who we say are in Egypt land. I am back for Canaan. That battle fought and the victory won. If you like stay in Egypt, I am banned for Canaan. I said I am banned for Canaan. In the name of Jesus. Be free from fear. It is when you are not revived. When you are not redeemed, when you are not re-energized, equipped and empowered, that you are afraid of all these things. Amen? Amen. We don't fear that. I told you before, sometimes over here, <laughs> my pastor was there, though if you have been long here, I'm saying it uh, just for repetition purposes and for those that didn't know, uh, somebody came from one of the colleges around having some issues, and then as we were praying, the person fell, fell on the floor and was moving like this, like his name. The snake has always been there, but when power means power, One will bow for the other. Amen. 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 Uh -uh. And some of you, in your ignorance, you are running to people that maybe are powerless or they are using gimmicks or even some evil power. Evil power. I came to Minnesota some years back to go do revival for them. And then the Sunday evening, nothing. And the pastor there said, there is a big church in town, 10,000 sitting capacity. And there was a revival going on there. Instead of us just talking, let's go see what's going on in town. And we were there. And this man, I never saw anything like that before. People were falling like anything. And this is a white man now. Falling like anything. Falling like anything. They can't say you are gone. 
And then he took off his jacket, just like my wife was sitting right there. He threw the jacket on the woman, and the woman fell on the floor and was raining on the floor. I said, Who is And eventually, he said he was going to pray for everybody. Check up with your pastor when you get back. Amen. Amen. And as he was coming, I don't know what power he was using. And then he got to me, he lifted up his hand, lifted up his hand like this, to the hands of me, and then he took him back. He looked and said, who are you? I know somebody, I am somebody. I said, I am somebody. He said, who are you? Where are you from? He dare not lay hand upon me. I have the Holy Ghost power upon me. Amen. 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 You can do it with people but to try it. Listen to this. If it be and it's not a part of God, you have ended up on the floor himself. I'm telling you something here. You look at us, you, you look down on us. We have the spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody here has been blessed. Just somebody be real. Amen. I said be real. Amen. Don't be a fake believer. That's what we talk being revived. Don't just come to church. Come to Christ. Amen. Don't just be a member in a physical church. Be a member of the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the angels of God will recognize and say this one is real. Don't you know the eight people, the children of God, they gather together and then the devil went there too. And then you say the demon shouldn't come to church. Let them come. They will meet us here. Amen. 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 You know, we got to a point that when people come for prayer, I don't even pray for them again. I just told Pastor because he has seen enough, he has been trained up. I said, go and tell to them. And when he gets there, things will be happening. Amen. 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 Just get educated. And all we call is the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, listen. This is a real thing. Not that the devils are not there, but we are saying that we are more than the devil. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. There was a day we prayed for somebody and we cast out a spirit. And the pastor is here, hearing me. And the name of that spirit within the week, he was standing on the phone with the wife, the, the PMC talking on the phone, and that spirit came on the phone in their talking. Amen? And mentioned the name. And the PMC then said, ah, Are you with somebody? He said, No, I'm not with some with anybody. He understood what is going on. He didn't tell her. So that that could not run me. Amen. And then he said, Pastor, this is what I said. What I saw, I said, yeah. Welcome on board. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They will try you, but they will never, never Amen. back out. Amen. 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 You think because you say you're a Christian, the devil will fold his hands. Eh? It's a warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not coming. But the mighty true God, to the pulling down of strongholds, in and bless the Lord. Sometimes the book were over there in Virginia, and then somebody came for prayer. And my pastor here, I was a pastor from uh, from Philadelphia. He was there, and he saw wonders, praise God. And he let the prince energize. And then he got to Philadelphia, and then he saw a situation. Instead of calling on the overseer, he 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 with it. Did you deal with it? Praise the Lord. Listen, the power is there. Just somebody use it. If you are a child of God, tell somebody, use it. Use it. It's when you don't know what you have that you are afraid. You are running up and down. But the Lord is liberating you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I need a better one. Amen. 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 It is when you are not revived that you are under yoke. I told you the beginning is ignorance. Ignorance. And I always tell people, if there is anything in your life before you came to Christ, now that you are in Christ and genuinely in Christ, use that authority. Understand? These signs shall follow them that believe. You have the sign following you now. Don't ignore your past. Pay attention here. Don't ignore your past. That's why I said, 
They should lead us in prayer to break all the causes earlier on. Don't ignore those things. Don't just say, now I'm saved. Everything is over. Everything is not over. You have the power to deal with everything now. Amen? Amen. The pastor you are running to, you don't know his life. The prophet, you don't know his life. The woman that is the visionary, you don't know her life. You don't even know the power they are using. But at least, if you don't know anybody, you know yourself. You know whether you are real or you are not real. Stop going for prophets. Stop going for pastors. Please understand, I'm not saying there are no real pastors. If there are no real pastors, at least I know I'm real. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I'm equipping you. You get what I'm saying? That you will be a warrior yourself. I'm empowering you so that you will do exploit for God's glory in Jesus' name. I am energizing so that you become a terror to the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, and nothing will by any means hurt you. How do we know if you are really revived? Evidences of revived people. Evidences. People like that, they have the fear of God. They are people that have repented of their sins. They do their restitution. They are not keeping stolen things. They are not keeping stolen wives. They are not keeping stolen husbands. They are not keeping stolen money. And they say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. They are not keeping things they stole from the employer. The houses they built with fraudulent money, they are not keeping it. The certificates they got by lies and deceit, they are not keeping it. And those of you that your name is Janet, but because of immigration, at your work, you are getting married. I pray your life will not be mad. You do your restitution. Your name is Jacob. But you are using you some of this paper. And what am I doing? I should have Vincent. <laughs> and to watch it, it's just something. Somebody say, hey, my name is Innocent. <laughs> How innocent are you? You repent, you do your restitution. You reconcile with God and you reconcile with man. You mend relationship with God and with humanity. There are people that everybody around them are, I told you before, witches and wizards. Everybody is bad except themselves. The problem is not with them, the problem is with you. Make right your life and all will be right with you. There are people that are righteous in all their dealings. All the, they are righteous. Whether people are there or people are not there, they are righteous. They fear God. That's why I began with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom. And then the Bible says to have understanding is to depart from iniquity. From iniquity. I got this from somebody trying to describe understanding. 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 Can I get a little child to come here very quickly? A child, get me a child to come here. Not so small, but the child that knows he or she is not. Uh, Somebody say you are. Anybody? Yes, come over, come over, come over. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Yes, my pastor here, can you come? Can you please come? Uh, pastor, did you, can you come? Praise the Lord. Stand right there, stand right there. Understanding, understanding, understanding. Look at this young girl right here. How tall is she? Compared to the three of us, is she upper or under? Under. under. Put your hand on top. Amen. Where is she? Is she under or above? But what is she doing? She's standing. Understand. No matter your situation in life, keep standing. Amen. For the truth, you may not have the money, you may not have the title, you may not have the position. Stand for righteousness. 
You may be under in life, but stand tall in your inner mind. And the Lord will stand with you. In the name of Jesus. People that are revived are clothed with humility. They have respect for God. They have for respect for people of God and for the men of God. They are fully burdened with passion for soul. They live daily an exemplary life. You know the Bible says in Matthew 5, uh, Matthew 5, 6, let your light so shine before men. You live your life in such a way. You know, as we were going home yesterday, I think, I, oh, it was my pastor here again, connected me with somebody uh, that I don't know. But the person said, he knows me as far back as the early 80s. And then uh, the person was talking over the phone, and uh, the person said, there is something I knew you for that time. And then when she said it, how loving and caring you are. And I think I hear people say the same thing today. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you're a backslider, you were good before, make a change. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Revive people are people that obey the word of God. Jeremiah 23, 28, I told you about dream before. You don't live your life on the basis of dream. You don't do anything by dream, otherwise the devil will take advantage of you. Jeremiah 23, 28, the prophet that had a dream, let him tell the dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word. How? Faithfully. What is a chap to the wheat? Seek the Lord. And understand, I want to repeat it again. We don't run the church by dream. Can I hear somebody say that? We don't run the church by dream. We don't know who is giving you the dream. They had dream for me many years back, or revelation, or vision, or whatever they call it. And when they told me, I sent the message back. I said, that revelation is not for me. You may claim it, but I rejected it. And I said, the revealer of that thing is not God, but the devil. And it became so. It never came to pass. Evil will not come to pass in your life. Amen. I said, evil will not come to pass in your life. Amen. I have to say because I've heard it. People come, I have this dream. The other one come, I have this dream. The other one come, I have this dream. And again, pay attention. If you have your dream, God wants to pray about it yourself. Deal with it whether it is false or real. Deal with it yourself. Amen? We have the Spirit of God here. God is watching over His church. Amen? And God will keep His church to the very end. Revive people are separated from the world and the allotment of the world. They are separated from the world in, in, in the way and manner they think. They are separated from the world in the way and manner they say the things they say. They are separated from the world in the kind of music they listen to. They are separated from the world in the way they conduct their business. They are separated from the world in the way they dress. They are separated from the world in the way they run the church. The church is under the control of the Holy Spirit. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The Lord will help us. Amen. Be ye not unequally you together with unbelievers. If you are truly revived, your life will be different from their life. What then will be the exploit? We are wrapping it up. The exploit of the truly revived people. They live for the glory of God on a daily basis. They demonstrate godly virtue. The fruits of the spirits are seen in them. They declare the total gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Teaching them. 
to do all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You don't teach some and hold back some. You don't say this one is, you see the way I spoke about restitution earlier on. Not all pastors can confidently and courageously do that. But we are telling you, if you really want to make it to heaven, and you want to have power with God, you do your restitution. For somebody you have done wrong to your neighbor, go and say, I am sorry. You have told a lie, no matter how far back. The Holy Ghost is reminding you, go and mend your way. Go and fix it. That's the only way you can do exploit for the Lord. You don't want to spend all your time and life in the church. You don't want to give all your money and everything to the, to, to the church and then end up in hellfire. I understand. It takes courage to be able to do restitution. But God will give you the grace. In the name of Jesus. I understand because I've been with that one for so long. It's difficult to leave out, to, to leave the man. If you will take the step of faith, the Lord will favor you in Jesus' name. You demonstrate godly virtue. You declare the total gospel truth. You die daily. You die daily. A revive people dies daily. And then, and then, you defend the glory of God. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Not that alone, you demonstrate the power of God. And that is where we are going. Demonstration of the power of God. I told you earlier on. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy hold you. This sign shall follow the name. Excellent. Whenever you get to the book of Acts of the Apostles, Acts means the deeds of the Apostles. The activities of the apostle, the accomplishments of the apostle, the exploits of the apostle. What were they busy doing? They were busy winning soul. If you are truly revived and you believe in righteousness, you believe in holiness, and please understand anywhere I go, I don't put the label of a pastor on my head. Amen. The lady I told you I met in the plane. She said, please, I need to get your information. And then I gave her my number. And then she said, should I put there a reverend or pastor? I said, just put there a brother. 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 Who are you? You became a brother before, before you became a pastor. You became a sister before you became whoever you became. Up till now. I know within her she's going to know that this person is not just a brother. Amen. But the brotherhood made me to be whoever I am. Brother in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Not a brother in the lodge. Not brother in hypocrisy. And if you're a sister, be sister indeed. Amen. And you do exploit for that. Amen. Shall we rest upon our feet? Brethren, we are going to pray serious prayer. But you want to begin with yourself. You want to deal with yourself and your situation. You want to pray real prayer. Prayer of genuine salvation for yourself. Prayer of righteousness, purity, and holiness. You say you're a Christian, but you know you have fallen. You are inconsistent. You are rising and falling. You love the Lord, but the grace to stand for God is not there. Today, a change is coming to your life. Please close your eyes. Repent of your sins, every sin you know that is wrong. Renounce them. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. 
Come unto me, all you that live and are heavy laden. And I will give you a right rest. My joke is easy, my burden is too high. Tell the Lord. Liars will not make it to heaven. Hypocrites will not make it to heaven. Stubborn, rebellious people will not make it to heaven. Confess your sin to God. Stop going confessing to man. Make right your way. Corruption will hinder you from making heaven. Tell the Lord to help you. Speaking evil of other people will hinder your heaven. The revived people, their primary exploit is the exploit of righteousness and holiness. Wickedness against humanity will hinder heaven. Evil imagination will hinder you from making it to heaven. All form of uncleanness will hinder you from making heaven. The dirty things you watch on the internet, on your phone, on the television, in the middle of the night, will hinder you from making them. They actually will introduce some evil spirits into you and hold you bound for life. Disobedience will hinder you from making heaven. Confessiousness will hinder you from making heaven. Keeping malice with people. Being envious of others. Murdering and destroying people behind them. Backbiting. And you call yourself a Christian. If you're a backslider, you need to call upon the Lord. If you're proud, you may try to cover it up. You're a poster. What do you have that has not been given you? You are disobedient to parents. You are unmerciful. Tell the Lord to have mercy upon you. True revival is not in singing and jumping. True revival is in righteousness and holiness. True revival is in godliness. Revival is not in how many we are, but how standing you are. And how much understanding you have. You are there, you are posting. Huh. That may hinder you from making them. You are attached to the world. When the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Worldliness will hinder you from making heaven. 
loading up your system with worldly music. There is a spirit behind it. It will hinder you from making heaven. Re revival is in genuine repentance. Re revival is a conversion and transformation of life. And if you're a witch or you're a wizard and you come to church before the fire of God consumes you, repent and renounce it. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are the adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, violence, emulation, rocks, strife, sedition, heresies. Envy, mother, drunkenness, rebellion, and such life of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But to pray for the Spirit of the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Bible says against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, they that are redeemed, they that are children of God, they that are born again, have crucified the flesh with their affections and the lust. We live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Maybe you are still so bad and you are saying, Can this born live again? The Spirit of the Lord is saying, There is a quickness, Spirit of the Lord available. You are trying only. You are trying only. You are trying only. You are only. You are trying only. You are trying only. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. My goal is to prepare everybody for heaven. I'm not just interested in having you as a member of the church. Add it to the number. If and when you are not daily prepared for heaven. All eyes closed. You are here today. You know, that you want to reconcile with God. You so much have that fear of God. You want to reconcile with God. All eyes closed. All shots close your eyes. Please raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You want to reconcile with God. You want to fix your life. You want to fix your life. You know what you're doing. God bless you. Those hands that are all. God bless you. God bless you. You know you have not been born again. You have been religious, but the salvation of God is not there. And you want to give your life to Christ today. You can join them now. You can raise up your hand also. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You are there, you know you are rising and falling. Rising and falling. And you need the grace to stand firm, never to fall anymore. You can join them. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. The Lord will do a miracle in your life. Those of you with your hands up, please lay those hands upon your chests. Lay it upon your chests. 
or wherever, in the lane of your head or whatever. Close your eyes, just talk to God for some of you. The Bible says, if your sins be as scarlet, it shall be as white as snow. Don't let like crimson, it will be like gold. If you be willing and obedient, we will eat the fruit of the Lord. It shall come to pass, says the Lord. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come unto me. All ye that live and are heavy living. Understand. The enemy doesn't want you to stand. But the Lord that has kept me for this many years will keep you. The Lord that kept the apostles will keep you. The Lord that has given our leaders in the faith will keep you. Tell the Lord what you want him to do for you now. You don't want to rise and fall anymore. You don't want to rise and fall anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray before you all the brothers and the sisters, including the young children that have raised up their hands at this point in time. Calling you for mercy and pardon, having repented of their sin, I call on you, Lord, that you look down from heaven upon these souls that desire you more than any other thing. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Forgive their transgressions in Jesus' name. Save their soul by the power of your mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of fear. Spirit of instability. Hear the word of the Lord. Pack your Lord. Get out now in Jesus' name. Amen. Rising and falling. You cannot anymore. For I decree today by the word of the Lord that the grace for this one to stand and never to fall again be given to them in Jesus' name. Be correct for righteousness, for holiness, for purity, for uprightness. Oh Lord, bestow upon them in Jesus' name. I command every mark of the enemy upon them. And every weakness that the enemy has been taking advantage of. Oh dear Father, I cancel them now in Jesus' name. Amen. David pray, oh God, restore back unto me the joy of your salvation. I pray, these brothers and sisters, even the little ones, oh Lord, let the joy of your salvation come into their soul, come into their spirit, come into their body right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let their heavens fall. Amen. Let the angels of the Lord, oh, Jesus. the angels of the righteous one, the angels of the redeemed, and come from the Lord there. Amen. Strengthen them. Amen. And Lord, when Jesus was at Gethsemane, he was human. He was weak. He was sweating. He called upon you. You answered him. And the Bible said, the angels came mention unto me. Father, minister to this one. Amen. Thank you for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen to this. The Bible says that the husband man shall be the first particle of the fruit. And I told you, as a child of God, there are lots you can do by yourself. By yourself. Understand, we pray for you if you still in prayer. But all I'm saying is, I want you to get to a point whereby you become matured in faith. You become matured in prayer. And you take the bull by the arm. 
and you possess your possession by yourself. In the name of Jesus. It's time for us to pray. Your prayer of deliverance for yourself. Pray of deliverance for yourself. Pray of deliverance for yourself. The Lord is going to touch you. The Lord is going to touch you. Whatever you are going through in your life right now, whatever you are going through, your hour has come. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy. You are going to decree right now. Every serpent and scorpion represented in my life. I take authority over them. I release them now. I renounce them now. I trample them under my feet. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every affliction in my life. Every oppression in my life. Every limitation in my life. Every stagnation in my life. I command you in the name of the Lord. Pack the load and go. I can see some of you sitting down. That is not how to do spiritual warfare. That is not how to take the battle to the gates. That is not how to confront the enemy of your soul. The enemy wants to weaken you. So that you not rule and reign. But in the name of the Lord, you rule and reign. You are going to be clear with your mouth. You are going to possess your possession. Every limitation in your life. Every stagnation in your life. We war not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and against power. Against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Be clear and be clear now. Every principality and power warring against me. Let the fire of the Lord consume them. Let the power of the Lord destroy them. Let the arrow of the Lord strike them. In the name of Jesus. Every ruler of darkness ruling over my life, ruling over my family, ruling over my business, ruling over my career, ruling over my children, ruling over my spouse. I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual wickedness in high places. The Lord is higher than you. I take my position in Christ. I take my position in Christ. For I am seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Far above principalities and power. I overthrow the cancer of the enemy. I destroy the powers of darkness. In my life, in my spouse, in my children, in my ministry, in my career, in my body, in the name of Jesus. Only you can pray for yourself. I don't know your problem, you don't know my problem. All I'm saying is, there is power. There is anointing in the house. The manifestation of the spirit is due to every man to profit without. Begin with yourself. Begin with your family. In the name of Jesus. Any cause running in your household. Every cause running in your family. You can break them today. The exploit of the revived people. You can break the cause. You 
can lose the bounds of wickedness. You can break the chain. Every spirit of barrenness in your life. Restlessness in your family. Husband and wife will not see eye to eye. It's not of God. Parents and children cannot work together. It's not of the law. Children are stubborn and rebellion. It's not the will of God. Whatever you desire in your heart when you pray, believe it. You are receiving your blessing and your miracle today. Your prayer will not be in vain. Your coming today will not be in vain. Sit on 
does that.
song, let me sing in the song. The Bible says you cast out devils. And when we lay our hands upon the sick, they shall recover. If you are sick in your body, you can step forward, we pray for you now. If you are sick in your body, we lay hands upon you. For healing touch of the Lord, you can come out. Keep, keep singing and just say suddenly. Yes. You have sickness in your body. Sickness in your body. Sickness in your body. I'm only coming for those with sickness in their body right now. There is healing virtue in the sanctuary. Let me stop 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth.